Hey, what's going on, everybody? Rob Satch from Feedback Crunch. We're going to talk about Webflow. How do you, uh, what do you do when you convert a website over from WordPress over to Webflow? And how do you do that WordPress to Webflow conversion really well for search engine optimization? Um, now, let's just assume that you've built a beautiful site like we have for my client here. And we are working from an older Divi site that we built out using WordPress. And I'm going to show you a couple of things here. One, I'm going to show you how do you make darn sure there's going to be five different steps here, but how do we make darn sure that the things that are going well in SEO actually happen and actually work? Now, one little thing that I would add in here, remember that um, when you convert from one site to another, the main thing we want to avoid is any page that is currently being indexed by Google and is actually getting traction. We want to make sure that we have its replacement on the new site. That's its most core form. The other thing is, is we want to make sure that we send consistent signals to Google and Bing um, that are consistent with what we had before. Now the site might look different, but um, I'm going to show you how to make sure we don't lose the most important um, ranking information so we don't kill any of that SEO traffic. Man, your, your, your clients are going to be mad about that if you screw that up. And remember, we have Google and we have Bing. There's kind of two sides to this. In this, I'm also going to show you how to export um, a WordPress, particularly the blog posts, and get them over into Webflow. I'm going to show you how to make what are the, the critical things you'll want to do within your Webflow to make sure that SEO works. This is going to be super practical. I think it's going to help you. I'm going to show you how to do this, what plugins to use, what's the process actually look like, and how do you make sure it's good. So um, right off the bat, here's what I want to start with. Anybody's who web, anybody who has a website and you're developing a new website, first build a great website. <laughs> The next thing, and just, you know, if you develop websites and you're looking for somebody to help you with um, paid advertising for your clients to actually increase their um, increase their, their traffic and, and to get things going really well, boy, I tell you what, that's exactly what we do here. Give me a call. Um, we won't undermine any of the work. I'll, I'll just show you when we work with people, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to have an excellent website. We drive traffic using social, um, paid search, in-person marketing, remarketing. Um, and the idea is you drive them to your website, which is your lead generation funnel. We capture an email and then we have a sales generation funnel. We're really good at helping them build up their platform. Um, we build systems for requesting reviews, getting reviews, advertising, doing great landing pages, um, having good follow-up with email. That's what our specialty is. So go to feedbackrench.com if you have that. But now enough of that. That's your sponsor, right? I'm your sponsor. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Here's the old WordPress website. Here's the new Webflow website. Um, what we're going to do first is I'm just going to show you how to make darn sure that your current website, we want to find out what's the most important stuff you find. Now, here's what you do. You go to the tool called Search Console, the Google Search Console. You're going to want to get added to this. Um, I have a YouTube video that shows you how to do this, but basically um, if you go in and you get in here under the overview and then there's an admin tab, settings over here, you can have your client, if you, if you have a client and you're starting to, to take over, you go to settings and you go to users and permissions and have them add you as a client, okay? Or add you as a user. So if you don't have access to this, you're gonna need access to this. If they don't have this, that was a problem with the former company and you better make sure you get it up here. All right, so let's go back here. And one of the little confusing things that you'll see is that when you create an entity or you add a property, you have a domain property or a URL, URL prefix. Each one of these you're gonna to have to validate by putting an HTML code in the header of the website. That's a whole other video. But I would encourage you to add HTTP, HTTPS, www, and non-www as URL prefixes over here, and then also do the domain one. And the reason why is the domain one doesn't connect to Google Analytics or Google Ads, it's bizarro, but these do. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you find out which one is set as your primary too, so once everything's set up. But uh, all that being said, back to um, once you've found the website, we can say, hey, here's the clicks that go on in this website. Go down to the performance tab. And in the performance tab, I'm gonna look at the last three months because I think that's relevant. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, here are the search queries, here are the clicks, and here are the impressions. You could change this if, it, if, it, if impressions weren't there and it was click-through rate or if it was the average position, this is the aggregate for every page on the website that's been submitted. Now, that's the query, those are the queries that we rank for. 
under pages, you can see the pages that rank and how many clicks they get in the last three months, how many impressions they get. And if you hit this tab, you can even open it up and see what it looks like. From here, what you're going to want to do now, there's a, a good philosophy that I believe in. Okay. Um, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of pages that are what we call zombie pages. They're pages that don't get any traffic. Google basically ignores them. They're pretty much useless. These are pages that actually came with the website on the first conversion that we did. I don't know that I'm really concerned about making sure these are here. I'm actually going to delete them because I don't think they matter. I think they're pointless. So if you look at them, they're non-functional websites. They're blog posts usually that just don't really work very well. Um, or they're, they're really hard to find maybe. Um, there's some different things we can do with this. This is a, a learn page. Uh, but well, so that's one side is, is it ranking in Google? What this is going to do is going to show you, are you going to lose SEO if you mess it up? So what you'll want to do is make sure you take the list of like the top 10 for sure. And make sure that we're going to do redirects to the new content. Okay. So up here, what you'll want to do is export. I have a sneeze coming. Export it to Google Sheets. And once you get it, you will have the URLs. And that's super important. Once you get the URLs, you're pretty much, if you go down to pages here, you can see here's all the URLs. Okay. So now we know what's most important. And I would work from a priority of make sure before you convert this site, you want to make sure that at least, you know, at least these guys are in there and really I think the top 10 there's a whole philosophy that would say get rid of everything that doesn't matter simplify and start making better higher quality content and that's what we're going to be focusing on here now the problem that we need to do we know what we have to convert I know that most of these are blog posts now here's one of the problems in Webflow is that um, the the blog post systems are all CMS items if you hit the gear here have the domain name forward slash blog and then forward slash the name Whereas a lot of times in WordPress, you're working with blog posts that don't have that. In fact, I know that this is a blog post here. You hit this, notice how it's forward slash slug. That's kind of a problem. So three things we're going to do here. We're going to export them from WordPress. We're going to import them into WordPress or Webflow. And then I'm going to show you how to do the redirect. I'm only going to show you real quick. So it's pretty easy. There's a plugin within uh, WordPress that I would do. Go to plugins. So go to the old site and chances are, uh, remember you have posts and you have pages. You can export both and you might end up uploading them all into your new blog post. So you might have pages that need to be represented as blog posts moving forward um, or you can make an, a, setrum, a separate CMS. But let's hit add new and what we're going to do is search for this WP uh, or just type export. And there's one called WP export. You could search that, but it's export with this logo, this colored logo. This is a great system. This is what I would use. Um, and what you're going to see there is this is going to allow us to ex export the whole thing to a CSV. So you install it, you activate it, I already have that set up. And then we're going to go over to all export. We're going to hit new export. Now here we're going to go for a specific post type and we're going to do posts. So now notice everything that we've ever had here is in there, divvy bodies and, and stuff. Um, there's 198 posts. The first thing I'm going to do, actually, before I do this, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take all the drafts and I'm going to delete them because I know they're nonsense. And I'm going to make sure that we've got trash pending. We're going to get rid of all the pending. I don't even know what this is. Holy cow, it's from 2013. We're going to delete all that because I don't want that over. And then published 172. So, all right, so we're dealing in reality now. Um, so let's go back to the all export, new export. We're going to select the posts. Once we get the posts, now what we want to do is we're going to customize this. So hit the customize export. And what we're going to do is we're going to get, we're going to tell it what to export into a CSV. Now, I know that you want the title of the blog post or the page. You want the content. That's the actual HTML content. You're going to want that. That's already in there. Um, the other thing, if you go over to other, this is super important. Make sure you grab the slug category because that's going to be the domain without, or it's going to be techwaremn.com forward slash slug. And it's just the slug. So it makes life really easy when we're doing these 401 redirects. You're going to need that. The other thing you're going to want is uh, when it comes to media, go into images, images, media, and get the featured image, right? Um, that's probably the most important thing that you're going to grab. And then back into standard, 
you're going to probably grab the date and that's probably the most important thing. So here we've got the title, we've got the date. Oh, and then because we use Yoast or you might have WP um, SEO, WordPress, WP SEO, you hit custom fields and I'm going to go down to Yoast. So it's all these goofy things. You got to kind of understand what it's saying. It's Yoast WP SEO category. I don't want that. It's Yoast title and Yoast description. So if we've put a meta title and a meta description using Yoast, that's going to pop up there. Um, now you could preview it if you want to. I've already done this three times because my audio wasn't on in the first video. Hit continue and you'll see it's grinding away. It's grinding away. We're going to tell this to get all 200 records. If you have a giant one, um, a giant export. You'll want to be careful here, maybe do it in batches, but I'm going to confirm and run the report. And this doesn't take long on a, on a you know, this is a site with 170 blog posts. Most of them are pointless, but we're going to download this as a CSV. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to quick jump over here and we'll open it so we can just validate that it looks right. And then the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go into Webflow and make sure that Webflow has a CMS thing uh, or a CMS field for each one of these categories, which is most of the time you'll already have that. So we'll open this up and once it's open, we'll be able to see a title, a meta description. Now it reads kind of goofy. So the title, boom, this is the content, right? The slug is there. Featured image is now you'll want to do this while the, uh, yeah, featured image date, SEO title, not all of them had that. So we'll go out. Now let's go into your web flow and let's jump in and hit the gear icon. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure I added two fields down here, the meta title and meta description, okay? Um, once you hit save and you've got all that, you'll go in and you will import, you upload the file. And once you upload the file, maybe what I'll do is, I have too many here. So what we're gonna do is we'll open old one and we'll delete a whole bunch of them um, anyways you get it you don't need me to show basically you'll go in you'll place them well I should show you um, so anyways you'll upload them and then you'll connect them I'm not gonna waste time doing it because it gets to be a little bit of a bear um, but basically you'll, you'll say over here um, you will import each one or ignore it and make sure that you connect them and then hit import. I can't do it because I don't have the, the hosting set up to this. The next thing that you'll want to do is come into project settings. Again, I don't have the um, plan set up for this customer yet because we're still working on it. You're going to go to hosting. And now what you have to do is you got to do a redirect. So you're going to take that, you're going to take this and you're going to make sure um, that that you've got a redirect to the new forward slash posts forward slash advantages. So you're probably going to have some manual entry here. Um, it's kind of a pain. I, I'm not sure if they have a wild card rule anymore or if that works really well. I haven't done that. Um, I've had to do them manually each time. So when I don't even know, that's a, I have to go learn that I've been doing it manually with our team. It's kind of annoying, but um, make sure you do that. And then when you're in each page, and each blog post. So remember, don't forget that it's important to do your meta titles and meta descriptions. So here you hit the gear and make sure that you put a title tag and a title description on each thing because that's what's gonna show up as the meta title and the meta description. And I would say one more thing is do not forget down here to your actual blogs template to go in and put add a field, do your meta tag, meta title. Meta, I name them that so that they're easy in meta description and then make them same as SEO, make them same, select image. I'm gonna use the hero image. Um, don't exclude these if they're gonna be good and, or if that's relevant. So make sure that you fill out your, your meta titles and meta descriptions for everything. That's super important. Once that's, once that's done, I would go through and I would resubmit your website and that's a whole other video and that'll get it crawled. And then make sure that you do um, Microsoft Webmaster Tools, submit it to micro, Bing Webmaster. So Bing Webmaster, that's a good one. Um, Bing Tools, submit this here as well, and that will get your site crawled by Bing. Bing is super relevant. So God bless, good luck. Hopefully that's helpful.